Hi, my name is Mike Ligata G, and today the video is on the curses associated with poverty and riches. Yes, both have curses, and you're going to find that a lot of them will have to do with um, the curse of Cain, where the head is either pushed down or you have the inflated ego. So, both of these have tremendous curses and problems when it comes around to money and uh, their understanding of money. Now, is money bad? Money is used for exchange of goods and services. So, if, you, if you're going to live in this world, you got to buy something to eat. It's not like uh, these guys that say that uh, you know they're gonna go live with the earth. You know we can't just all go run out in the middle of the woods and say, okay, we're really holy now. We found out that that's not really the case. You know, piety and being holy is not about um, running in the middle of the woods and uh, watching the waterfalls like some videos talk about. Uh, you know, the living water. The Holy Spirit is a living water. That's water coming down off a of a waterfall or whatever a river no it's the truth it's how we how we are dealing with the truth is our inner truth the same as our outer truth so looking at this image right now we're going to talk about how money interacts with this image we can immediately see that this person in this relationship has the head pushed in when the head's pushed in and this is the blind enabler these people can work very hard however if working hard was um, the only way you know to make money then the the person digging all day should be millionaire but that's not how it works but this person with the head pushed in is becoming feminine the body has a head the body has a head and the torso of course my handwriting is not that great head and a torso the torso part of the body is silent similarly the person with the head pushed in is not able to um, let's say be very verbal about what they want so they might have either shame associated with asking for you know more money for their work so the work uh, has a certain amount of value and the value is the money if you're silent if you can't speak then it's going to be harder for you to have more money because you won't uh, you won't uh, fight for yourself to get what you should be getting so you won't ask for a raise this person won't ask for a raise and a lot of times this person who won't ask for a raise is going to work for someone who won't give them the raise okay they're not going to give this person the raise because if he's not asking this guy's not going to volunteer because remember, this dynamic will attract with that dynamic, and that attracts this dynamic. So what do we do? As we get into the truth, with our inner truth and our outer truth, a lot of the problems that we would have normally with interacting with people will start solving themselves. Because the truth now will start pushing you to use your mouth, and you will speak. And we're not even talking about, you know, looking in mirrors and talking to yourself or, you know, rah, rah videos, you know, go run out and do this and, and you'll feel better about yourself. None of that will come close to bringing up your head with the truth. As your head grows with the truth, you will start to speak. You will look at your work and you will have more value for your work. 
you will become more efficient because you might not be that efficient. Just because you're working someplace doesn't mean that you're pulling your weight. If you're working for someone that's not this guy, that's not the psychopath or narcissist that'll be a slave driver like an Elon Musk or a Steve Jobs or anyone that, you know, you could do whatever you do there all day, you could do 10 times more, it's still not good enough for this person. It's, um, it's a problem. And as you come into the truth, you'll be able to maybe even sever this relationship and come into a better working relationship. But don't make the decisions right away. These decisions will be kind of like made for you as you come more into the truth. Because what will end up happening is as your head's going to grow, this person's not going to want you around anymore. Because they're going to be very intimidated. You're going to start saying no to that person and they're not going to want you around. But you got to be conscientious in whatever you do at this point. Because you're coming into the truth. You're working someplace for eight hours. Give them their eight hours. Give the person the eight hours that you're working for. As you speak the truth... Your jobs will probably change, you might get a raise, or you might get fired, or you might just end up being pulled into another better position. Pretty sure about that. On the other side of it, this person, their eyes are never satisfied. They're never satisfied. So, what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and use any means possible to squeeze the life out of you and bend the laws to make a lot of money. When you're coming into the truth, money changes. It's not the same that it used to be. If you're this person, you're not going to need to impress people you don't care about with buying this or buying that. In fact, one of the curses for these people is that they will always spend every cent that they got and never enjoy the money. They just don't. And, and being in the high-end uh, audio business, I can attest to the fact that people have many homes and they don't live in them. <laughs> They're just boxes, empty boxes. Some of these empty boxes, the, the, the customer or, or the homeowner might come maybe once a year, two times a year for three days here, five days there, but it's a ridiculous amount of money they pay for it. So one of the things is that you won't get that enjoyment. Not only will you not get enjoyment, your children come out all screwed up because you're not going to spend any time with them. Whatever relationships you have are going to be all screwed up. So one of the things that the Bible talks about is the love of money. And the, and the love of money is real simple. If this is your existence, if that's your head, and all your head is about a dollar symbol, then everything you're going to do is corrupted and in the lies. Because as you make ridiculous amount of money, the opportunity, not the opportunity, you're almost presented a situation where you have to lie. It's really very, it's very hard to find people that are going to be so wonderful that are making lots and lots of money. Someone is being taken advantage of. We can just look at, you know, my favorite for this is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is making money and the first thing he does is he screws over Steve Wozniak out of five to seven thousand, I think five thousand dollars in the beginning. They're making money, but he still had to screw them over because the only thing that matters is the money. Nothing else matters. So for you to make this kind of money, one of the things you have to find out is what are you going to sacrifice? So if you want to make a lot of money, there's got to be sacrifice. The first place you're sacrificing is yourself. So if you're going to sacrifice yourself, what are you going to do? No sleep. No time. Always working. And God has a very good way of making sure that you're always going to work. 
and harder and harder and harder because now you're going to be having the fear that you're going to lose something. So you have to like make more money and then you want to buy more things and there's more things that you're looking at because you're making more money and you're going to spend all that money and you're going to live on, uh, you're going to live on very uh, borrowed time. Another thing too is a lot of rich people, they don't really, a lot of people might not know this, but if you have like a lot of money, you try and spend it on an, uh, on something of an investment so that you don't have to pay tax on it. However, with what happened recently with co the coronavirus and the whole world was locked down, all these people that had all this money tied up lost it because they're not liquid now. So God has a way of pulling the rug out from under you if that's the money you're making with the inflated ego. So you're going to sacrifice. What are you going to sacrifice? You're going to sacrifice yourself and you can make some money. You're going to have no sleep. You're going to have no time. You're going to be always working. If you have kids, they're not going to know you. Kids won't know you. You know, they, they, they might look like uh, an arrangement on a table that you could put on the table so everybody could see them. And then you could put it away. Just like the scandal about these parents spending an enormous amount of money to put their kids in these, uh, to get them in these uh, Ivy League, you know, colleges or universities or whatever. So even their kids now are just property for money. And everything will revolve around the money because that now becomes the God. So if money becomes the God, the first thing that you're going to sacrifice before all this is you're going to sacrifice the truth. Yep, that's the first thing you're going to sacrifice. So that means now there's no more truth. You're always going to be working. Kids won't know you. And now you have to lie. And these are your own personal sacrifices. And then what happens is now you're going to move on to the other people that are going to help you make that money. And you're going to force them to, to work enormous amount of hours. You'll try and pay them as little as you can. And you'll make their life a living hell. If you're this person, that's what you have to do. If you're this person and you're glorifying that person. And you think that it's okay to have all this money. Maybe you're never going to have that money for a reason. So that you don't become that rotten person. On that end of it. And remember, on your end of it too, your poverty is not righteousness. God doesn't want you to be uh, living hand to mouth. That's not, that, that's not uh, real, you know, you're not, you're not doing anybody a favor being in your position. Both of these are curses. Yes, money is important, but that doesn't mean that you... That having no money makes you more uh, noble. It doesn't. Because you could be this part of the curse. Now, if you're not this part of the curse, and one of the reasons why you're not uh, making more money than, you're, than you possibly could, could be because of family. And that is noble. Or because you cannot sacrifice the truth. And that is spectacular. And in my work, I have have messed up jobs because I didn't like the customer. Because the customer was going to put me in this position and I didn't want nothing to do with it. And on the, on the outside, you said, well, Michael, you know, you could have made a lot of money there. I'm like, nah, I wouldn't make it because this person is going to find a way to screw me out of it. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. I was going to do a, a home theater for... Um, uh, I was going to do a sound system for someone and I literally told the person getting me the job, look, I just don't like the guy. So this was a Bang & Olsen job and it was actually for someone that was running the Audi Forum uh, or Audi big flagship store in Manhattan on uh, Park Avenue. So I literally called the guy up and I said, uh, I just don't want to do the job, I just don't like you. We hung up, he said, before we hung up, the guy said that you're not going to do the job. I'm like, I know, it was my thing, you know, I, and I understand that. Sure enough, 
a month or two later, I get a phone call from the guy who was getting me the job at Bang & Olsen. He told me, I need you to do that job. And I said to him, are you serious? I'm like, you know what I just told him. He goes, doesn't matter. They screwed up and you're the only person that we can send in there. So not only did I tell this guy off that I'm not going to do his job, God puts me in front of him. He puts me in front of this guy and this guy is forced to deal with me in Audi flagship store multi multi million dollar store they they it was it was like a nightmare for him he he hid himself at first he saw me he knew exactly who uh, he he knew exactly the conversation we had had in the past and he was calling uh, my friend Steve complaining complaining and Steve said look you dropped the ball you didn't do what you were supposed to do now you're stuck with Michael. So God will put you in positions where being in the truth will actually give you a blessing that you would not even believe. So got the job that would have lost in, you know, in a normal way. If you're trying to logically figure this out, I would have lost that job. But no, got it. And the funniest thing is all he kept on doing was complaining about me. But while was there... I had seen him berate someone who did nothing wrong, but he used that opportunity to stomp on that uh, woman. So the truth was he was going to be that monster. And because of the way God put me in that job anyway, through Steve and cramming it down their throat, he was powerless. God pulled the rug from this guy to put me there. And that's exactly what... Weird things like this are going to start happening to you. Maybe not exactly to that extent today, but you're going to have a lot of stories now because once you start getting into the truth, inner truth, outer truth, and you start really realizing your past and your involvement to creating this part of the relationship, whether you were this person or that person, a lot of things are going to come to light. A lot of things are going to come to light. So, family... Truth can hold you back from pursuing this crazy thing about the riches that everybody is so wanting to be like the super rich guys or they all want to be Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. And let me tell you, you don't believe maybe that someone could lie like that. Okay, let me read to you a few notes I put down about Steve Jobs. When Steve Jobs came back to Apple, you know, they made all those iPhones and everything. They made the iPhone 4 and something that they did wrong with the iPhone 4 is if you're holding it, it's not going to get the waves out. So this problem turned up really quick and, um, and Steve Jobs' answer to it is you're holding the phone the wrong way. So you're talking about a guy worth billions, billion dollar company, tons and tons of money. They're making money hands over fist. And he could not tell the truth that they screwed up. Instead, he tells the client who is vested into the Apple product that, you know, you're holding the phone the wrong way. Okay. Blame the customer. The day that I had found out about that, I said to myself, he's going to die. Because of God sitting there listening to this and, you know, Steve, had, Steve Jobs had all this stuff happening to him. He has the money to pay. But... He doesn't want to stay in the truth. No problem. He's got to go. So I wrote this down. iPhone 4, 6-24-2010. Steve Jobs says, holding the phone the wrong way. Okay. On 8-24-2011, Steve Jobs steps down. On 10-5-2011, Steve Jobs dies. So these dates, I figured let me run the numbers. So 624, on the day that he said you're holding the phone the wrong way, till the day of his death, is 66 weeks and 6 days. Isn't that interesting how that 6 pops up? 66 weeks and 6 days. Now, yep, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's fine. Let's pick another one. 624, 2010, till the day he steps down on 824, 2011, is 60 weeks. There's that 60 again. Well, let's do one more. 
on the day he steps down until the day he dies is the difference of the 66 and 6. It is <clears throat> 6 weeks. So we have 666. Six, six. We have 60 weeks there and 6 weeks from the time he steps down until he dies. That 6 has popped up a lot. Now why is that so important? Well, if you remember, the Apple logo is, with, uh, is the apple with the bite and if you saw one of my other videos this is the gar this is the apple from the garden of eden and they even have uh they even have um advertising that that actually went into that the and remember steve jobs had a pancreas problem that could have been caused from his diet a fruit diet and the fruit diet is a similar problem that uh, Ashton Kusher had when he was method acting uh, Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher or whatever his name, Ashton Kutcher or whatever his name was, he was method acting playing Steve Jobs and he started having a pancreas problem because he was eating the same fruit diet what's the name of the computers? Macintosh is that a fruit? that's an apple? This coincidence, 66, 6, it's not a coincidence. Things don't become coincidences like that. When you're, when you're getting into the, the, when you're here, you're disconnected from reality. What, what happens is things in your life turn out to be pretty telling about what's going on. I can go into Trump and how, you know, he wants a win, he's the winner, you know, I want to win, win, win. And he won the election, but he didn't win the election. Hillary lost the election. So he never beat her. And the reason why I say that, it's not about mixing politics in this, is because Hillary was trying to do a plan. She was the cunning or covert enabler to allow him to win the primaries, and then that ended up biting her. So. Here's some verses. We'll talk a little bit about this in our last six or seven minutes. It's about uh, money again. And I'm just going to go right to the parts that are interesting. Okay. Okay, we'll start here. Okay, First Timothy 6. Um, the first thing it says is, And those believing masters, let them not slight. Do your work because they are brethren, but rather let them serve, because they, they are steadfast and beloved, who are the benefit and partaking. So if you're working for a brother, do your job. Um, okay. Okay, and now he is proud, knowing nothing, but donning about questions and word striving, out of which doth come envy, strife, and evil speakings, evil s surmisings, wranglings of men wholly corrupted in mind and destitute of the truth they don't have the truth supposing the piety to gain depart from such but it is great gain the piety you know uh, with contentment to be content for nothing did we bring into the world manifest that we are able to carry nothing out but having food and raiment with these we shall suffice ourselves and to those wishing to be rich do fall into temptation and a snare and many desires foolish. And you know, those people that have a lot of money that, that, that want more and more and more, they just want more and more and more. Foolish and hurtful that sink men into ruin and destruction. For a root of all evils is the love of money. So if the money now becomes your head, if the money becomes your head, that's the love of money. And you, when you love something, you will do the work of it. So that means that, that money is more important than truth. T-R-U. T-R-U-T-H. So money becomes more important than truth because everything now is about the money. And once you start thinking like that, you're definitely, you're bound to lie. They pierce through with many sorrows. And thou, O man of God... These things flee and pursue righteousness, piety, faith, love, endurance, meekness. Now, meekness doesn't mean that you're going to sit there 
and be like this humble guy. A meekness guy is a guy who carries a sword, but he doesn't have to pull it out and beat you over the head with it. So, you know, meekness is not what people think. Be striving the good strife of the faith, be laying hold of life, age, during, you know, stay in the truth, to which also thou was called and didst profess the right profession before many witnesses. I charge thee before God, who is making all things alive, and of Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus, who did testify before Pontius Pilate the right profession. You know, I was going to say that again, but it has to do with Jesus talking about the truth, and that's when Pontius Pilate says, "Well, what is truth?" That's the profession, which I should have had it here, but the, well, maybe I'll do a second video. That thou keep the command unspotted, unblameable, till the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his own times he shall show the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who only is having immortality dwelling in light, unapproachable, whom no one man did see, nor is able to see, to whom honor might age during. Remember, when you are coming into the truth, you are resurrected. Men can't see the light when they still have their will. We are resurrected with a new spirit and the mind of Christ. Those rich in the present age charge thou not to be high-minded. Look at that. Not to be high-minded. Nor to hope in uncertainty of riches, but in the living God who is giving to us things richly for enjoyment. To do good, to be rich in good works, to be ready to impart, willing to communicate, treasuring up themselves a right foundation. So the wrong foundation is making money the top priority and the love of money for the time to come. Okay, uh, one more place too to look at is 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 9. And this know thou that in the last days now there shall become perilous times for men shall be lovers of themselves. That's very clear. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, evil speaking, speakers to parents disobedient, unthankful, unkind, without natural affection, implacable, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, not lovers of those who are good. And that's true. When, when you have someone like this, they can't believe someone that's telling the truth. So you're going to have problems with this person. Um, you're going to have problems with this person working with them if you're coming into the truth. And similarly, if you're coming into the truth and you're bringing yourself down, you're, this person will also flee. Um, the truth is going to do a lot of things. The truth is definitely going to do a lot of things in your life. Um, traitors, heady, lofty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of piety. Now, these are the people that think that they're religious, and it's power having denied. They denied the truth, and from these be turning away. For of these there are those coming into the houses, leading captive the silly women, laden with sins, led away with desires many fold. Always learning, here it comes, always learning and never to a knowledge of the truth able to come. They can't come to the knowledge of the truth. I mean, how simple is this? And even as James and Jambri stood against Moses. Now, they stood against Moses because Moses was chosen by God and they said everybody's saved. James and Jambri said everybody's saved. So also these do stand against the truth men corrupted in mind, disapproved concerning the faith. How are you disapproved? If you're choosing God with your will, you're already disapproved. But they shall not advance any farther, for their folly shall be manifest to all, as theirs also did become. We are in a time now where this is all going to show. And as this begins to show with the truth, they're not going to be able to keep the... Uh, it's it's not going to be able to reproduce this lie and this continuation of, of things that have been going on for so many years. I mean, if you just listen to the news these days about what's going on with the uh, Democrats and the Republicans, they're both lying on both sides. They're lying. This is all. This all can stop very quickly as the truth comes out. To be in the truth, your inner truth being the same as your outer truth. 
and then this relationship will be manifested and people will be horrified or God will change it. Uh, God bless, be well, and um, I'll have another video for you.